Hello, I'm Simon Thompson from IOHK and I'm giving this talk on behalf of the Marlowe team. So that includes Dimitro Kondratiuk, Pablo Lamela Sijas and Alex Nemish. What I'm going to talk about are standardised crypto loans on the Cardano blockchain. And just to give you a bit more detail, what I'm going to do is talk a bit about finance on blockchain in general and the actor standard for financial contracts. I'll then talk about Marlow, our DSL for financial contracts on blockchain. And then I'll talk about the ways in which we put together the actor standard and the Cardano blockchain. In particular, I'll talk about how we've built an ex executable specification of Actus and how we have built a mechanism for generating instances of contracts from the contract terms. And I'll finally talk about the ways that we can provide assurance for users of these contracts. In fact, I'll have said a bit about that when I talk about the design of Marlowe as well. OK, let's get started. So we're talking about crypto loans. What happens in a loan is that a lender advances a notional amount to a borrower um, and a borrower will, will pay some charges, perhaps some interest and make a repayment on a given date. Um, the simplest possible example is a zero coupon bond. At the end of the, the loan, the, the um, borrower pays back the notional plus interest to the lender. Now, going beyond that model, um, we can make scheduled interest payments during the life of the contract, for example. We can say you'll pay interest every month, every year. And also, the interest rate can be made to vary during the life of the contract. That Technically, that yeah, gets called a risk factor because potentially it adds, adds risk to the, um, the engagement of the contract. The contract may cost more, the loan may cost more. Um, than the, the borrower intended, it may return less than the lender had hoped. So there's a risk both sides. Of course, the first option, if we simply make scheduled payments without a risk factor, um, that's entirely static. We can, we can plot the payments that are, to be, that are to be made in advance of running the contract. Whereas the second option, where, where an interest rate can vary, means that we have to calculate or recalculate, as it were, the the payments to be made during the execution of the contract itself. And of course, a loan is, is, um, is not necessarily terribly valuable in the case of a trustless blockchain if we can't guarantee that the lender should repay. So in more general cases, um, there will tend to be a collateral provided by the, the borrower to the lender um, and in many, uh, in many cases on blockchain at the moment, what happens is that a, a lender um, will be given a crypto asset uh, by the borrower and the lender will provide fiat or stablecoin um, values back in, in, in the loan. And this means the borrower um, gets liquidity, they get their money to use without selling their crypto asset, um, and they pay for that in the in the interest that they pay and of course the risk for that lies in the the fact that the collateral can vary and typically crypto assets vary um, rather more widely than do the the stable coin or, or fiat um, amounts that they're borrowing so there are there risks lie there for both borrower and lender again okay so that gives a, a, a brief picture of of the the um, context in which we're working. Um, now these, these particular types of loan are one of the standard types in the Actus algorithmic contract types unified standards. And those, Actus is an attempt to, to describe in a unified way, using a particular model I'll talk about in a minute, to describe in a unified way the different types of financial contracts that exist. Um, and the, the, the standard looks at different types. It also does embrace different degrees of dynamism. As I mentioned earlier, we can have static or variable rates. And also Actus allows um, for people to make payments off schedule. And that again, of course, will require recalculation of contract terms. And the more variability that is, is uh, offered, then the fewer guarantees that can be given about the behaviour 
of a contract. And we'll come, we'll see this in when we talk about Marlowe in a few minutes. The details of the model, and I will come back to this uh, when we look at how we render things in uh, Cardano, is that we have a state machine model so that um, the, the uh, execution of the contract is modeled as the execution of a, a state machine. From the contract terms, we have um, and, and a description of, of scheduled events, we can build a state transformation function and we can see that at any particular state, there might be a, a payoff made, and that the state is um, the state is described by iterating the state transition function, taking whatever events, uh, taking the contract terms, and whatever events occur at that particular schedule point, and um, iterating that that state transition function along those um, event inputs. So it's a, it's a simple declarative model of how contracts work. Now, what's the contract, uh, what's the context we're working in on Cardano? We have a, a, um, a language for expressing financial contracts on Cardano. This is called Marlowe. And just to give you a very brief overview, what can Marlowe embrace? It can, can take payments into a contract. Contracts can, can um, move in different directions according to user inputs or inputs from oracles, bringing in real world data. So here's where the risk factors come in that we were talking about earlier. And contracts can make payments between accounts or, or, to, um, or to participants. So it's a simple model which allows us to model cash flows. The other element that um, Marlowe has is that we model roles in the contract control of a role in a contract by custom tokens that are issued on the Cardano blockchain. So we're able to, using those tokens to reassign um, ownership and indeed to securitize, so have multiple, multiple owners of a particular role in a contract. Okay, so that's, the, that's what we're aiming to model. In designing Marlowe, we could, I mean, in particular contract, a, fun, a program running on a blockchain could run forever, it could if it's waiting for an input, it could wait for an input forever. It could terminate holding some assets. The contract comes to an end and some crypto assets are held by that contract. And it could potentially double spend those assets. Now, we're able to rule out all of those um, eventualities. So there is no recursion, no low loops in Marlowe itself. So contracts are finite. We guarantee that contracts will terminate by putting timeouts on all actions. If somebody is asked to give an input, we time out after a certain time and take remedial action. Similarly, if they're asked to make a deposit of money. And so we can read off from the timeouts what the lifetime of a particular contract is. And we've also modeled that at close, when the contract comes to an end, all assets that are contained in the contract are refunded and we use local accounts for the participants to ensure to know to whom any asset should be refunded. And we get conservation of value from the underlying blockchain. So we've designed the language, built into the language are these kind this, this sort of assurance for contract users. Um, now, here's, here's what the language looks like. We have a payment construct. A party can make a payment to a payee of a certain value and then evolve into another contract. On the basis of an observation, a contract can... can um, we can choose one of two alternatives. And here we, we can say we provide a number of cases where we're looking for an action, a deposit or a, a choice. And when that uh, action is taken, the corresponding contract is executed. But if no action is taken up to the point of timeout, we provide another contract to be executed in that case. And that, together with the semantics of close, where we refund all the money, ensures that we have the behavior we just promised. OK, just to say a tiny bit about where Marlowe fits on the Cardano blockchain, Running on a node, we have the general purpose functional language Plutus, which corresponds perhaps to Solidity on, on Ethereum. 
And now, and Plutus is is essentially a dialect of, of Haskell. And so on top of, of Plutus, we run Marlowe, our special purpose, our domain specific language for financial contracts. And that has to, to interact with the real world, um, with oracles and so on. And it also has to, um, through someone's desktop or, or mobile app, has to interact with their wallet so that uh, users can put money con in, into a contract or receive payments from a contract. So that gives you a general picture of the architecture. And we were able to provide assurance in a number of ways. Generally, we can use quick check, the random based testing approach. Because contracts are finite objects, we're able to perform analysis, what we call static analysis. So verify automatically properties of individual contracts. We can also, we have a model which allowed of the, the language in a theorem proving system that allows us to build machine supported proofs of system properties and properties of contracts and contract templates and finally we're able to generate contracts from high level specs i'll talk about that in a while okay what about actus and cardano how do we how do we use cardano in particular marlow um, to to describe the actus standard what we provide is an executable specification of actors so close to the the model that we see in the actor standard you can find that in the uh, url i gave earlier we have built in haskell a a model of how that specification uh, is is described so that we're able to take actors descriptions and deal with them directly in haskell and then we're also able to generate contracts using this executable spec. In part, we can generate contracts that particular Marlowe contracts, particular actors contracts from the terms of those contracts. And we have a user front end, which we call actors labs interface for composing contract terms using a visual interface. Um, just to show you that, here's a, a snapshot. Um, and you can see it's, it offers you, a, a, as it were, a menu of, of um, contract terms, start date, maturity date, notional amount. And those apply to every, pretty much every um, principal PAM contract, every loan contract, and then a number of optional um, values. And from the, the selection of those that are made, we can generate an appropriate contract. Um, and here you see a very simple uh, contract between a party and counterparty. It involves the, the counterparty, who's the lender, pays a thousand Lovelace, um, and in, then immediately deposits a thousand Lovelace. That's immediately paid to the party, who is the um, the borrower. And then at the end of the contract, the the borrower is asked to deposit eleven hundred Lovelace, which is then paid to the counterparty. So. The premium that the counterparty receives, the premium the lender receives, is 100 Lovelace. Now, our executable spec in Haskell, what can we say? Haskell's a, a functional programming language. It's a very nice way of, we can directly take the mathematical style of description that we see in the actor standard and literally render that as, um, as functions in the Haskell language. One thing we're able to do very easily is take the naming conventions in, in Actus and respect those as much as we can. I mean, perhaps we have to use underscores somewhere to, to ensure that we get variable names that look like the, um, the Actus variable names. But more importantly, we're able to use Haskell type classes. These, if you like, these are abstract interfaces and they allow us to use a single description for both the actual cash flows that an instrument will make and the syntax of that instrument. So we're able to, our executable spec says, well, you can execute this um, and, and actually have, see what the, the outcome of a contract will be, but also you can build syntax that describes it. And we use that second aspect to generate Marlowe or Haskell code from these descriptions. So we get, our single, our single description of an actor's contract can either be executed directly or turned into a program which can then be executed later on. Um, and 
we've got a, a general unified type of conditions to fit all kinds of actors contracts you see here the um here's an example of the linear amortizer the lamb contract which has um a number of uh, different it has the same set of, of um conditions as we had for for the pam contract the loan but you can see here the the, the um data decorated with a star are different we have slightly different conditions um, that are required for a lim, LAM contract than for a PAM. And using a single type is, is nice and flexible, um, but it also requires us to do some analysis on which terms are applicable to which contracts and how we combine those terms in, um, in building a particular contract. And details of how we do that are specified in the paper. Now, what about contract generation? Um, I think here again, we see, we, we expose the underlying model. Um, at, e at each point in the, in the schedule, um, we, because uh, we build from the contract terms, we're able to build a schedule, which describes the points at which significant things happen. So from the, um, from the schedule, we're able to build the contract. And as you, that's built by, first of all, hooking up any collateral in the contract, then initializing the contract, and then iterating through the schedule this chain link function. And what the chain link function does at each, each point is it receives data, it calculates a payoff, and then processes that payoff. So we're iterating that chain link function through the points in the schedule. And what the Marlowe contract consists of is we'll, we'll generate all the um, all the payments so we do the iteration is is done and generates the Marlowe and then we have a simply a, a flat schedule of inputs payments uh, and so forth now under the hood we need different generation mechanisms for fixed and variable rates as I said earlier on if we have fixed rates then we can pre-compute payments in advance if we have variable rates, the, they will, the contract will contain terms to calculate the actual payments that have to be made at particular points. Um, one nice thing that we discovered doing this was that we want we enhance the Marlowe language in a small way um, so that instead of using a conditional branch between different contracts, we extended it with conditional expressions that allowed us to, to use a single thread of execution but allow... Um, perhaps to make two different payments at a particular point. Um, we also have to think in, for thinking about generation, what, how we do deal with contracts that are unbounded. And obviously one, one obvious way of doing that is to, is to impose a bound and say, well, this contract will have a, a, a an upper limit of um, 10 years execution, for example. We also it made us think about um, the best representation for numbers in the contract, and I think we've we've come to the conclusion that, and we're moving towards this in our implementation, that we need to use fixed point with a, a fixed number of decimal places rather than integers. I mean, the financial industry uses fixed point arithmetic, um, not floating point, you know, not not rational arithmetic, but fixed point and with with well defined. Um, well-defined rounding behavior. So in order to respect the conventions in the financial sector, we have moved to, we'll move to a fixed point implementation. And there is some question about how we, we represent the, the sets of values that are um, produced in the, in the contracts. And that is, um, again, details of that are in the paper. Um, so as I mentioned, we Cardano, in fact, the release of Cardano coming um, in the beginning of this week allows the natively on the um the cardano blockchain to build custom tokens and we um our aim is to use those in the implementation that will come on cardano later in the year so that we can represent ownership of roles by custom tokens and we also then get the possibility of having multiple tokens assigned to a particular role to securitize that um, so that a number of people might receive payment from a, a, um, a payment out of the contract, for example. And we can provide various kinds of assurance. 
Um, we, we've used QuickCheck, the Haskell random based uh, checking tool to check our Haskell executable specification against a Java implementation. And that's allowed us to, to find some discrepancies and some, some ambiguities in the spec. Um, we're also able to check properties of particular contracts um, expressed via an assert um, statement in, in Marlow, which allows us to check a property at a particular point in contract execution. Um, but particularly useful um, for Marlow contracts is that we can use SMT solving static analysis to check for potential failed payments. If there is a failed payment, potentially, we see a counterexample. And so we can take our, our contract as generated and check that um, if it is executed properly, it will always make the payments it should, or it will be provided with a counterexample of how a failed payment can happen. And as I mentioned, what, what happens with Marlow contracts is that there is a refund when the contract closes We've added a check to our um, static analysis to check whether there are cases where a refund will take place on close, whether there are cases where there are funds left in a contract. And if so, again, we get a, a counterexample. We get an example to show how a refund can take place. So we can provide those, gen uh, those particular assurances as well as the general assurance that Marlow provides that contract execution is finite, no, no funds left in the contract. For the future, we want to do a number of things, extend the coverage of actors within our actors labs, um, move actors contracts onto Cardano itself um, using what's called the Marlow dashboard, which is the end user interaction with contracts and look at more heavyweight verification supported by our Isabel embedding of Marlow. Um, and for example, we can look there at causality properties, hedging properties. Um, so showing that every contract that we write um, has a dual so that we can hedge against any risks there are in a contract. Or it's possible to hedge. So there's a number of things that we, number of different directions we can work in there. So thank you. That's been a, a, a brief overview of what we have in the paper, but lots more detail in there for you to see. And finally, if you want to find out more about Marlow, try out Actus Labs and so on, here's the URL. Thank you very much.